Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I have a Voodoo one here. I got a box of cards. There were some Voodoo twos and there was this Voodoo one in it. They're all basically e-waste or junk. They were bought as not working. Uh, well, rather they were bought as untested. But uh, the pictures were of good looking cards apparently and uh, what he received was butchered cards like the, some of Voodoo twos like the TMUs stuff like that uh, all the pins garbage cracked memory stuff like that so there were a Voodoo one in that box too and I don't have any real spare part like TMU or FBI for a Voodoo one but I hope to be able to fix this one anyways so let's take a closer look at it so on this uh, Voodoo one here are uh, missing pins or damaged pins like here and uh, are some damaged pins over here uh, here and uh, here so and I think yeah that's the most of the damage so I hope to be able to fix this damage. I probably have to solder some wires to the missing pins. Uh, and to do that, I have to dig out some of the capsule to get to the to the legs and further in, so we can solder something on. So here is the wood one under the microscope. And the pins are misaligned, and that's because they're loose. This is the top side of the, B P the FBI ship, so we got the TMU over here. And those also loose pins, yeah. So the pins are loose on, on the card. I suppose not all of them, because then they would be falling off. So we got a lot of loose pins. And bent ones here. And this is a common problem even if you haven't like physically damaged it for the pins to get loose over time. This looks like they could be in place. But it could be visual illusion too. It's not... Yeah, <laughs> that's loose too. Loose, loose, yeah. So th those are cracked. And that's kind of common on the in a wood one, a wood twos. I have to turn the PCB around here now. So. Yeah, it's just uh, impressive this ship hasn't fallen off. Are there any pins that aren't loose? So yeah, I think the first thing is to solder as many as we can into place and then fix the broken ones. Because you're going to have to dig into the ship to do that and there's a high chance it's just going to fall off as it is right now. Yes, yeah, so some here are definitely loose. Some are not as loose. So that's the FBI ship. Let's check the TMU here. Loose. Loose, loose. So yeah, these ships are coming off, and that's loose. It looks like they're gonna come off anytime soon. That's loose. This is damage. So here we got the broken off ones. We might as well remove that. 
it's gonna get in the way when I don't know if this pin can be saved, but we'll try at least. I don't think this is gonna come off, so yeah. So we're gonna have to do some repairs there. These are beaten up, but as long as they're attached, that should be fine. And by attached, I mean to the ship, not to the PCB. As long as no touching, so I don't have to go perfect trying to get everything to look brand new. That's not uh, not worth it. I might just do more damage than good. So. to do on this ship is to try to poke all the pins into alignment again as well much as possible. These aren't too bad, like a little bit out of place isn't a problem, it's when it's a lot of out of place. Check the FBI here, and it's 
as you can see, quite bad here. I have a ripped trace here too. I'm gonna have to fix that. So maybe replace, I'm not sure. This one is loose. I'm gonna scrape off some of the solder mask here on this one so it's prepared for uh, solder. That went quite easy, pretty crusty. That might actually work. This one can be over there for now. We need to remove the dead pad under it. Something that we do for now there. See if I can use my knife as support. So stopping it from bending in the wrong place. Thank you. 
I think that's the best we can hope for with that one. Just so that's a sort of bridge waiting to happen. So, might be some tension I fixed it before and got loose. But anyway, I think we're about ready to solder so we can actually get some pins back on the board. The fact that the ships haven't fallen off off is surprising. You're gonna have to go over this multiple times usually. A lot of corrosion here too, so at least in the beginning there, so our dead pad. Not gonna repair that right now though.
This tip is 1.6 millimeters. This is really too big. A micro soldering pen would probably be better, but I don't have one, so this will have to do. It gives you like this tip take up the space of three of these pins, so it's supposed to pitch is from half a millimeter. The pitch is the distance, not the spacing, but the distance like between the legs centered to center of them or one side to the other side, like bottom side to bottom side, so be a half a millimeter, so yeah, so this tip is 1.6, so that kind of adds up, I think, yeah, they're probably 0.6 millimeter pitch, so three of them 1.8 millimeters, this is 0.6, this tip, so yeah. Just easy not to make bridges if, uh, and also if you have one of those nice small pointy micro soldering tips you could get down in this between the pad and the pins there and really rub it like so but I don't have it can't have everything Tends to be a lot of tin, at least on the wood tools when I done them on the actual pins. So the tin flows to the heat source, so the tips. So uh, it tends to be a lot of tin coming down. So you really don't need to add much to your soldering iron, other than enough to get a good, like have a tip tin then going. That's that pad is partially loose, I think. But as long as it's not broken off, that will have to do. I'm trying to do two pins at once to so speed it up a bit. Bigger chance of bridges, but uh, I think I have the right amount of tin on my tip, and uh, what's on the pin seems to, and pan seems to do. I think you can see it um, when I'm rubbing. Eventually, you see tin flowing all the way back behind the pin, like there. Shot out. Because the pins are loose and they're hovering above the pads, and there's corrosion, I need to like rub them in and get the heat in both the pad and uh, the pin. Like a good connection again. This is 0.8 millimeter solder, uh, so should really have 0.5, but yeah. At the time I bought it, I figured 0.8 was what I wanted. Gives you an idea of the size of the pins too.
So it says the incest team you under team you under Voodoo 1. Didn't I don't think it does under Voodoo 2, it says CK something or CK or BE or something. So I just zoomed out a bit. So yeah, over there is the damage area we have to fix. Yeah, it's a lot bigger on the Voodoo 1 than the Voodoo 2. I think there might be the same number of pings, more or less. The pitch is smaller on the Voodoo 2, so I just think for they sized it down to make it the packaging and PCB cheap, maybe. And then dealt with the smaller feature size instead. So I dug out the, the broken pins. And for some reason my recording failed, so we'll have to skip that but I basically just used a blade knife and dug it out <coughs> took probably five ten minutes it's quite hard material to dig out so but basically what I did and I cleaned it up now here so we can get some wires in there I need to hold them in place with some cap on tape I think so first thing to do is to get some wires we can use and, uh, and I use some network cabling so this is two cables so there are multiple strands in one of these. So yeah, a strand is pretty big when you get to the scale. So we need two of them. So we need to make uh, 10 of these pads that we created here. My smallest tip, and it's too big for this really. Point one point two, I think this tip. Well, they're both stuck to something, so... Mm-hmm. 
Let's clean out a bit and see if we can see something here. So I think that looks good. We can see if we can zoom in more. I think the ones at the bottom is good. And those looks good. So the thing now left to do is actually to cut the bottom ones. And it's gonna be a little bit tricky now when I trace us there so we don't get them off. Because uh, I find that it's uh, hard, you can't just bend the wire off, it's gonna rip off the pad, it's solder is too soft. So we're gonna have to try to cut them. Well that seems loose, doesn't it? Yeah. Did we get it this time? I think we did, so we're ready to cut now. Trying to hold it in place while I try to get these to break off. So, there is our repair. I think this should work. I've done it before. It doesn't always work on the first try, but let's hope this does. So, we should be able to more clearly see the repair now. So, we have one, at least one more repair here that I can remember. And it's uh, the missing pad here. See if this plan works, pulling out the pin further. Might actually work if you do it like that. Not beautiful, but working is better than ugly. Or maybe it's working is better than beautiful. So here run Windows, device 
device manager here and we have a Voodoo Graphics 3D Accelerator. And you can go to the menu here. We've got the card here apparently. So I had to reinstall my OS because uh, when I was trying to make this video here, not Quake 1 worked fine, to the mark 2000 worked fine. Quake 2 and 3 didn't they hang as soon as I tried to run with the card. Uh, but uh, probably probably due to me having like uh, Voodoo 2s and Rushes and Banshees installed on this test setup before. So you can see I have a few different drivers here and stuff. So a reinstall was required. Also my capture card doesn't seem to like the switching between the two cards here. Goes all dark sometimes. Let's try it again. I noticed, uh, I think it has to do with the switching and the signals being different. The card, uh, the capture card probably tries to adapt and doesn't figure that out. So the restart of the game helps there. I noticed with the pass through and this capture card, not the capture card itself, but the VGA to HDMI adapter has issues. But uh, as you can see, Quake 1 is running. So yeah, can move on. And before Quake 2 and 3 didn't want to run. But we that should work now, I think. It's probably gonna be dark again. Nope. Thankfully. So here we have Quake 2 running. So as you see, no artifacting or anything. It's Voodoo 1 isn't particularly fast though. If you've used to Voodoo 2, this is slow. This is slightly tweaked Quake 3 here, so we can get some actual frame rate. And Quake 3 is actually less demanding than Quake 2 is on the graphics card. It's more demanding on the CPU though. But this is uh, not extremely tweaked, but highly tweaked Quake 3 config. So we're in the 30, 40s there, maybe 50 sometimes frames. So technically playable, not not really what you want for competitive gameplay, but perfectly playable. So now we're at 41. So yeah, the card is working. So we're gonna finish up the card now. So now that we are working Voodoo 1, I want to upgrade it. So I have some RAM we are prepared. I have this ship here, it's prepared, it has straight legs and one pin sticking out and that's pins 14 because that's the rust and uh, that needs to be separate. So we gotta piggyback these ships onto here and then draw, you create a new line for the rust from the FBI. So this is texture RAM upgrade, it's gonna give us 4 instead of 2. So it will just fit straight on like so, and then we have to solder it.
now that we have uh, piggyback the ships and uh, installed the uh, rest line, we need to connect it to the F FB, uh, the TMU. We need to do that with the resistor too. So I'm gonna get the resistor out here. There it is, 47 ohms. So we got in the corner here, should say the number somewhere, yeah. 105, so that pin is 105 and we need 130, so we have to count to there. So it's time to finish up the card. Uh, I've done the 4 megabyte texture mod. Uh, I did uh, try the 4 megabyte frame buffer mod, uh, but uh, that didn't work. I didn't find extra memory, plus the card didn't want to work. Uh, I think I did the mod right, but I realized one of the pins that were quite badly damaged in the corner is for that mod. So there might be an issue there. Or the RAM could be broken because it came from a really dead car that had some cracked chips too. These came from there too, so I don't know what the problem was, but I decided the frame buff mod, the only reason to have it really is for 800 by 600 resolution, and this card can't really do that. I mean, it's 22 FPS in Quake 2 and Tweet, Quake 3 is 40, so 8 by 600 is more like for simple demos and stuff, so it's not important. The texture RAM though makes a difference. Tested the card with it and uh, 3D Mark 2000, 550 points without the extra RAM and 1050 width. And the Quake 3 can run at the same texture, uh, same texture uh, resolution as the Voodoo 2 now, without losing frames really. So, we need to fix all this in place, so the, the wires put here. So this is the stuff you can get on eBay, they look like this. Uh, this is one with a white and uh, a red cap, I think. You can buy either blue or red the boat in a kit with a pen. I think it's like this with one bottle of each, I think it was like 15 euros. Uh, it lasts about a year, it says, and it does harden in the canister over time. This one has partially done it, but uh, I can still get some out. Another one got rock hard after a while. So they're about a year, but they're not that expensive, so... You can see it's lighting up on the camera here, I'm just holding it down so it will stay, I hope. Then I want to touch up the solder joints on the memory. Yeah, when I did now, when it's fixed in place, I can get some nice solder joints there. So that's in place.
So here we are in Windows. So we can use Trader more to check the amount of VRAM because I did, didn't find it. Like on the Woody 2 card you can check in the properties on the desktop. And I also checked Everest and it didn't tell me anything either. But we can change graphics card to this one. Let's do this first. It's a bit glitchy with the one in 3D Mark, but apparently that's normal. So we got two megabytes of video memory as frame buffer. I tried to increase to four, didn't work for me. Text memory four megabytes, so it was two originally. So we have four mem uh, four memory chips for each originally, and they took 56k each. Now the five hundred twelve 12k each, so four times half a megabyte is two. So now I've got eight on the texture. So and we could take layer on some 3D mark. Not gonna run through it all, but you can just check here. Make sure that is set properly. I actually had to put in a G for four because it's to the market used to start with the with the, the wood one because it has the little the frame buffer. If I had gotten up to four it probably would have started. Just like I would have too, but it seems like it didn't like only two, so it's shut down, so I had to put in that instead. Just to trick 3D Mark to st into starting. But as you can see, that is running. Can run some uh, Quake 1. Through the FX logo, that's nice. Do we like a time demo here? Time demo, demo one, I think it is. This is an Appension 3700. Uh, what we want isn't particularly fast by modern standards. We won't get your 60 frames here. So we got 28.2, it's about 30 FPS, and that seems normal, I think. It seems to, what, seems to be what I went for back then. Run a Quake 3 time demo here. Mm. I'll check there because I want to check the texture memory is set to the same level as what's usable on a Wood 2. It's the second highest notch on the scale there. Kind of funny though, when it comes to the graphics card, the Quakes games 1, 2, 3, they seems to get easier and easier on the graphics card, but harder and harder on the CPU. So they definitely did do some optimization over time for that. 40.1, I think we had 41 or something with before, if we ha if we lower the texture memory to the air. So here is the card then, and it's missing some pieces. So I made... Uh, Naya bracket, it's not the best looking one. I didn't have one in Chrome with uh, what completely flush. Uh, I figured out the same as Wood 2, so I copied that. So all of this donut card I had is missing all the metal pieces. Or well, either it's heat sinks or it's fittings like this. So let's see. That's the wrong way. But this is maybe not gonna look as good as new, but it's gonna look good enough and be usable. And look, the important part of it can be used.
So, there you have it. The fixed wood one resurrected from the dead with the falling of ships. And we got another 2 megabytes of texture RAM, so it's more capable. From benchmark I've seen, it actually makes a bit difference in most games. Uh, the 4 meg card is like a budget card. The 6 meg is like the sweet spot because the 8 meg card isn't really faster from what I can see because you really need extra resolution to benefit from that. So we can zoom in here and have a close up. Maybe it's not the most beautiful thing ever having a wires but I think it was better looking to pull them along the side and over like I've seen people do. These are, these are not as annoying to look at them. And the ship stacks flush to each other so actually it's quite good. I mean the print is good on them and so on so that kind of shows them off a bit. It's fine. So yeah. And I conformal coated what we fixed uh, it's over here. I conformal coated that and the fix over here. That's my wood one. My first wood one actually. I have never had one. I played with them, but I never had one. I ended up buying a wood two back then. So this is actually my first one I own. So it's going to my collection, mostly so I can have it as a card to test with. If I had to repair other cards, wood ones for other people, I have something to have as a reference. So yeah, this card is finished. I cleaned up the backside too. So yeah. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. We are going to host a public retro LAN party in Sweden on the 4th of February 2022. So if you'd like to join us, you can go to braindrainland.tk and join our Discord or check out our Facebook page for updates on tickets. You can also check uh, the link in the description to Victor Bart. He made a very nice YouTube video last time he visited us. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainland.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.